Hello everyone. Uh, good morning. Good 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 evening, and welcome to this month October month's application delivery management monthly webinar. As you see on your screen uh, now, well Netscaler is back, so we have branded the ADM as Netscaler ADM now, and ADCs will be Netscaler ADCs. Kumar Pandey, I'm the host and the panelist from the product management team, and I have my fellow colleagues Mayur Wadhar and Priyanka Yadav, who are also from the product management. So what is the agenda for today? First, uh, I will start with the overview of ADM service so that who, the audience who are new to this ADM service webinar and, and, and are user of ADM on-prem or not using the ADM at, at all, then it would give them a good context and a very quick overview on what the ADM service is, what is its value proposition. Then as, as, as per regular uh, monthly webinars, we'll start covering all the sessions uh, planned for today. First, we'll talk about the improvements in management and monitoring, which has been brought up. Then I will talk about through check-in, check-out, uh, pool licensing management uh, improvements, which has been done to allow unmanaged ADC instances. Then we'll talk, we'll, uh, Mayur will take us through the NextGuard ADC automation overview and how, uh, with a demo of how Ansible has been integrated with the ADM style books to achieve these automations for the ADC. And last, we'll be covering through the application dashboard primer. As we know, every month we bring up one of the features from the ADM, do a walkthrough and, and keep uh, everybody you know, uh, acquainted with the latest and all the features which are available within the ADM feature by feature. So this month we have selected a application dashboard. So let's talk about how you can jumpstart with the ADM service. So you can start in very quick three steps. First, you need to create a Citrix Cloud account. Then you need to select the ADM service offering. As, as you go into the next page, you have to select the inbuilt agent mode, which nullifies the need of an on-prem on agent so that you can quickly get started with the inbuilt agent. Once you select this, you have to copy the service URL and activation code and configure your ADC to be managed by the ADM service. What are the advantages? Let's talk to that. First, it's very agile, which means it's very easy to operate. All the latest updates gets prioritized and pushed across a bi-weekly updates. There is no hassle of high availability and disaster recovery, unlike you will require in your on-prem environments. It's very faster time to value, which means you get started within very few clicks. As I was even demonstrating the uh, uh, getting onboarded, it's, it's a very seamless process. And you have a state of art advanced machine learning, which means once your applications are discovered, over the ADM service and the data uh, stats starts to flow up and, and its machine engine starts to analyze all the data traffic, its pattern and give you the highlights of how the traffic has been behaving and, and sign out and, and sing, singles out any anonymous behaviors and, and give you the predictions on how the application would be behaving in, in, in the course of time. So those all is only very exclusive to uh, ADM service. As I talked about all the others, the, the most important part is it has very low operational cost, which means in very less in money and resources, you can basically set up an ADM service and, and pretty much uh, unlike you have a data center, we are, you have to have manpower to maintain the servers and uh, regulate the hardware updates and all this stuff using the man resources here in very less resources and time and money, you can basically you know, bring up the ADM service and start it managing your ADM, ADC infrastructures. So when we say ADC infrastructure, it pretty much may, um, you know, uh, uh, give you this flexibility of uh, managing any type of ADC environment, whether it is public cloud, which could be hosted over AWS, Azure, GCP, VMware, cloud. So all those public clouds can be you know, uh, supported here along with on-prem, or it could be a hybrid where you have mix of public cloud and the on-prem ADCs. And when we say on-prem, it, it supports all the form factors currently available from uh, Netscaler. Last one, pretty much any application, whether it is monolith or microservices are supported across. So as I talked about the advantages and I talked about how you can quickly onboard. So one thing which you get your journey started when if you decide to use the ADM service or ex start to experience the ADM service, you get a start journey with the express tier license, which is a premium version. What you get in here, you can start your journey 
with pretty much all the virtual servers under the network functions network reporting being open all the um, exclusive features which are there over ADM service like Wi-Fi integrations Splunk integrations all those are available for you to explore and pretty pretty much there is no limit over the uh, configuration jobs or style books configuration packs you want to use in you can configure n number of them so basically your management monitoring you can start from day one and experience all the uh, features which are very exclusive yes from the analytics point of view we have kept a tab on two virtual servers for you to experience the powerful ml analytics tool which it has and if you feel the value prop in and, and and you get the see the advantage of all the deep inspection which it does with the uh, uh, application traffic and gives you the insights if you're happy you can always move on to the next year which i will cover in, in a moment however just wanted to highlight with the express tier the data retention is only up to 500 mb or one day of data whichever is lesser so as i said right uh, if you have already uh, used a uh, service or you are an idiom on-prem user or you already acquainted with the analytics at the on-prem then definitely uh, the next journey for you would be to go with the full advanced license capability and buy the number of virtual server licenses for which you need to enable analytics what it does is it gives you the host of analytics insights which are available be it hdx gateway insight use cases or it's a web or ssl insight app dashboard ml based um, uh, security analytics all are available and in case of um, in, in case you need more storage of course based upon the features you enable maybe the features like uh, syslog or which requires uh, more storage or your infrastructure itself has a lot of data pumped in and the storage requirement is more you can pretty much buy a separate storage sq and and, and bump up the storage over the citrix um, ADM uh, service to your need so let let's go ahead with the uh, next uh, session wherein i will be first covering the new features or enhancement which has been you know brought into the adm service since our last connect which happened on uh, 22nd september webinar since then we have quite a list of features which has been uh, covered here so uh, first one is the management and monitoring under which you have now the option under the tech support bundle within the instance to uh, give the option for taking the bundle for the secondary adc instance and then the second one is the network reporting where the data points for each day if you select a duration of one month is available now which means uh, we will we'll, we'll talk about this in the uh, because this is uh, also in the agenda of improvement so we'll cover more details here so let's quickly go through other um, uh, improvements under the infrastructure uh, we have now the new option to create configuration job for auto scale applications in uh, citrix adm now you can reschedule the jobs uh, uh, if you see any unforeseen event occurs we'll again talk this in the today's session in detail then the view and usage of license information for unmanaged check-in checkout adc instances again they will talk in um, in a bit more detail around it in the analytics uh, we have the uh, improvements around web security violations where now you can view the analytics for block keywords and you can also configure the bot management on a platinum adc instances and style books now we have the support for citrix adc bls instances so as you see there are so many improvements has happened so every month we try, try to target and pick up the sessions which can we can cover in one hour so whichever gets overflowed and we are not able to cover in the current session will be followed up in the future sessions and of course if you want to read more on these you can always go to the release notes of the adm service and and and, and get more information over it so let's talk about the improvement in uh, management and monitoring. So there are three improvements which has been done. As I said, generate you can now generate a tech support bundle for a sec secondary ADC uh, instance. You can view the network reporting uh, for a month data report. You now you have the data points for each day and ADM rescheduling uh, for the job and unforeseen events occurred. So let's talk about this first tech support bundle, right? So as you see, right. If you go into the instance dashboard and select the instance and try to generate from the action to collect a technical techn technical support files you will see now the option either to select between primary or a secondary and then you can collect that well well i will show you also in a bit where this option is available in case you have not used it over the adm uh, adc instance dashboard then uh, second you can now view the network report data points for each day so as i was saying right so this is a month report for a bandwidth utilization so now you can see earlier it was averaging out for a week so the data points 
anything which happens within a week time may get averaged out so now we have a each data data point so all the values which shows here for a day averaged out so if you see 6 7 8 9 so it's basically covering entire day data point for a month so each day is covered here so we'll again show you in, into the uh, on how you can view that in case you're not using the network reports and then as i talked about right uh, one of the most used feature within the um, uh, ADM is, is is the configuration jobs and the upgrade jobs upgrade jobs are if you're not already using it it's it's used to it is used to us fuel the up automated upgrades of your adc infrastructure and configuration job is is around you know whatever the daily bu tasks are around configuring uh, uh, let's say you want to have a standard configuration for pushing out the uh, virtual server configuration or making any changes and you want to do at a certain point of time you can create these config jobs and schedule it to run at a certain point of time so what used to happen you know being a service cloud uh, adm being a cloud service at times you know when if your if your config job or upgrade job schedule falls into the cloud upgrade process which means either the adm service or the agent which is there on prem are in the process of upgrade this config job or the upgrade jobs used to fail and 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 uh, it used to just uh, not get succeeded so now what has happened now adm service is able to identify if there is an upgrade in progress around the adm service or at the agent end it, it will what it will do it will reschedule the jobs for from the for the following hours which means after one hour it will again try try to uh, run those um, schedule config job or upgrade jobs if you have already configured it so uh, let's go through the uh, adm service ui and see where these options are and what it does so let's talk about the uh, tech support bundle so as i said right under the instance uh, dashboard for all the form factors of adc you can uh, you can basically select an adc and you can perform host of actions here among them one of them is to generate a tech support file which means you don't have to go into the adc if you need to collect multiple tech support files you can just log in from adm and you can do that that's, that's here where you will find this option to collect it for the secondary and just click create support bundle it will create it for you to download next option which i was talking about here was the um, network reporting so within the network reporting as we know right we can have a custom uh, time duration or you can select last one hour one day one week one month so one month is where you know a lot of time we want to create a monthly report and send it across in those situations a uh, lot of time the uh, the report was not very helpful because it was an average of a week now that has been enhanced and now you have the daily data points covered in a monthly report so as you see here you have uh, every day being covered here within within the uh, report so that's what i've shown and if in case if you are not aware of it you can either download create a page of host of different uh, dashboard for uh, instance like i selected this instance and i a dashboard for throughput ssl traffic connections or and you can in, export them all together or you can export them individually as well so this is the functionality which is, which is available so with this i will just take a pause here and and i will uh, um, go back to our presentation and we'll talk about the check-in check-in check -in, check-out pool license so just in case if you are not aware of check-in checkout, it's a it's a way of uh, wherein you can provision uh, uh, ADC instance. It can check in and get the license, and it can check out. Uh, uh, once it check out, the license gets reallocated. So it's it's just more of a dynamic where you know you can allocate this uh, check-in checkout licenses. So our earlier there was a, a requirement that the ADC need to be managed. So which kind of you know uh, uh, was not uh, kind of you know. Uh, defeats the purpose if if a user wants to you know create a vpx instance for a certain use and and for a time for a time being and then it wants to destroy it then it has to go and get it managed which was an ask from one of the customers so we got and enhanced this now if you go into the infrastructure check-in checkout there is no requirement of ADC instances to be added as a managed device you can directly go ahead and uh, appoint the uh, licensing as an ADM service or ADM and what it does is it will allow the adc to be you know allocating allocated with the license and if you see the status it says not managed wherever i can still have an option wherein i can still allocate and i can 
even an, a, a managed device also can be allocated in a check-in check-out. So both. So basically, it, it's no longer mandatory for a customer to uh, allocate a check-in check-out license uh, as a managed to a managed device. It can be done as an unmanaged one. So uh, with this, I will pass on the uh, session to Mayur. Mayur, over to you. Uh, and let's talk through the all the automation stuff you have planned today for the uh, attendees and i'm gonna make you present thank you yeah okay thanks avinash hello everyone this is uh, mayur from mitsuka product management team i oversee our automation portfolio so today I plan to give you a quick overview of uh, our entire automation stack. Uh, along with that, we have some cool demo on how you can integrate ADM style books with Ansible and push configurations to Let's get up. Portfolio, right? Today in a hybrid multi-cloud setup where your Netscalers are distributed across different environments, let's say on-prem, uh, public cloud, even multiple clouds, then you might be using the different form factors of Netscalers, right? So managing them, monitoring them is a challenge. Uh, and that's where Citrix ADM or Netscaler ADM plays a, provides you a single pane of glass to manage and monitor your Netscalers. It provides you advanced analytics capabilities, and it comes with a lot of automation capabilities that you might be already aware of. These automation capabilities are ADM style books, which, which provides you a declarative way to push configurations to your Netscaler. Then you have config jobs to run administrative or routine uh, task on your Netscaler. Then you have uh, advanced upgrade capabilities and uh, another advanced capabilities of creating alerts or you know updating SSL certs. So it, it continues to be a one central control point to manage your distributed Netscaler infrastructure. Along with that, we have other host of integrations to manage your Netscaler environment. Uh, these integrations are primarily the Terraform and Ansible integrations. So this, this Terraform and Ansible tools are very, very popular now in the industry, especially among the DevOps platform teams, primarily because they provide you an infrastructure as a code approach to manage your uh, IT appliances or IT infrastructure, right? Um, Using Terraform Ansible, you can just define the desired state of your Netscaler in a particular YAML or a Terraform HashCorp format. And what it would do is uh, it will take those config files and it will fire appropriate Nitro APIs at the backend to, uh, to bring up your Netscaler, to configure your Netscaler as per the desired state. So in this way, it abstracts the complexity associated with the Netscalers, right? To do a certain operation, you might need to run, let's say, 10 Netscaler CLI commands. Over here, you just run one command in Terraform or Ansible, right? Because you put all of those things in one single file. And more importantly, once you are storing this Netscaler configuration as code, you are putting or hosting them in GitHub, then you can version them, you can manage and, and audit them over the time. Not only that, you can integrate those uh, ADC configurations as part of other other IT components that you have, that could be CI CD pipelines, that could be self service infrastructure portal that you are having. So it provides you a host of benefits of managing your Netscaler. Apart from Terraform Ansible integrations, we also have public cloud templates. So whenever you plan to move to public cloud or you want to deploy a fresh Netscaler VPX, you can use this cloud formation, Azure, or Google templates to provision Netscaler either in standalone or in a high availability deployment approach. Again, this gives you infrastructure as a code approach. This eliminates any kind of manual errors. And again, when you are deploying this, you are deploying Netscalers in the very much recommended fashion that we gave you. So again, it brings repeatability in your Netscaler deployments as well. Along with this integrations, we have our APIs. These are REST-based APIs. So all this automation tool integration, even ADM leverages this REST APIs to configure the Netscaler. If you want to build custom automations, then APIs could be a good choice because then you have to write the entire scripting, how you want to log in, how you want to log out, how do you want to manipulate the different responses, uh, uh, responses from Netscaler and how to use them for subsequent requests. 
So if you want to take that scripting uh, more of customized approach, then API could suit you. And, and for that, we have different flavors of SDKs in Python, .NET, Java. So this is the entire different uh, entire automation portfolio uh, on, of how you want to can manage the NetScaler. As you see, we provide you a lot of flexibility in how you want to manage NetScaler. You can use any of these tools, or you can use combination of these tools that suits your team, or that suits other teams who are also uh, work on NetScaler. Right. So. To avoid any kind of confusion, let's go through this entire ADC lifecycle and see how each of these tools fits in. When it comes to deployment, as I mentioned, if you go for public cloud, then you have this temp deployment templates to provision your VPX and, and the public cloud. We also have something cloud scripts in Terraform, so you can use Terraform to deploy your VPX in standalone on HA configuration, in any of these public clouds or even in the ESX on-prem environment. And as you might know, ADM comes with auto scale deployment capabilities, the smart deployment feature where within just a few clicks, you can bring up your ADCs in, in an active active cluster auto scale uh, deployment fashion. Once your VPX is up and you are able to talk to it via the NSIP, now you want to set up your ADCs that it can start receiving traffic. You want to set up user roles, you want to define certain global policies, you want to create VLANs, all this again can be achieved in various different ways via Terraform, via Ansible, APIs, or even EDM configuration jobs. Once your ADC basic setup is done, you want to now start configuring the NetScaler to, to uh, deploy your apps or to publish your apps to end users. And for that, you want to create load balancing V servers, content switching V servers, you want to define policies. And again, all this can be done in different fashions like Terraform, Ansible, APIs and KDM style. And when it comes to day two or day, day two plus operations, we have different solutions with Terraform, with HashiCorp uh, console that can help you to uh, manage your uh, backend services, like blue green canary solutions can help you to uh, 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 do a blue green canary kind of deployments for your backend services. And this is a solution that we have built in Terraform using Azure pipelines and completely in a GitOps fashion where just a single commit into your NetScaler configuration can trigger pipelines and set up your NetScaler. Right? Uh, again, we have integrations with console where automatically when you are introducing new backend services, NetScaler will be updated automatically without any kind of manual intervention. So in this way, you can employ all of these tools at different phases of your NetScaler lifecycle. At this point of time, I want to take a quick pause and, and want to understand how are you managing your NetScalers today? So if you can provide your response and do that, that would be a great learning for us that which tool is popular. So yeah, the first option is CLI or GUI, GUI approach. That's the primary the manual approach. The second one is the REST based APIs. Third one is using the ADM automation capabilities. And the fourth and fifth option, the Terraform Ansible, are the primarily the infrastructure, the code approach to your NetScalers. So let us know. Yeah, I think 50% have voted. Let's give 10 more seconds. Uh, please let us know which tools you are using. That would help me to make this conversation, this presentation much more relevant. And we can plan subsequent presentations as well accordingly. Okay, thanks Avinash. I think we can close the poll. Moving forward. Yeah, moving forward. So today's session, now rest of the session, I want to focus on the Ansible and how you can work with Ansible and EDM together. Talking about Ansible, Ansible is an automation tool provided by the Red Hat. It's an agentless way to configure your or manage your infrastructure. It, it is a very widely known as, you know, configuration tool. Uh, so it, it has actually been able to replace Puppet and Chef market because Ansible has become much more popular as a config management tool. Uh, uh, it's agentless approach means you don't have to install anything on your target devices. Uh, and, and again, it's easy to use primarily because you have to write those configuration in an YAML format, right? 
uh, and, and it's kind of procedural because you have to define a task in sequence uh, so they get executed in sequence right now if you want to use citrix uh, netscaler modules sensible modules then you can use it from various uh, various places the first one is we have our ansible modules hosted in the red hat automation ansible platform that you see here so these are the certified modules and and if you have access to this red hat ansible automation platform then you can just search for citrix adc and you will see those modules and you can download it um, if no, if you don't have access to this, then you can use the modules right from the Galaxy, or you can use it from the GitHub repo. Now, what you can do with these modules, right? So as mentioned, you can configure various use cases on the Netscaler, right? From load balancing, content switching, SSL, WAF, responder and rewrite policies, um, and so these are we have built some dedicated modules of Ansible that you can make use of to configure these use cases. But let's say there are certain use cases like Gateway or others for you don't find for which you don't find a dedicated module, then you can use a generic module that we have that is Nitro Info, Nitro Request, and Nitro Resource. Right. Uh, also you having used these Ansible modules, you can also have your ADM or ADM service as a proxy server. So all these Nitro APIs that are fired by Ansible will go through ADM will get validated and then only it gets uh, get to configure the releases to get you started we have a lot of sample ansible playbooks that you can go and have a look how this scripts or those modules or playbooks are written uh, you need to combine multiple playbooks and write new configurations that meets your use case so now now coming to the ADM Ansible modules. When it comes to ADM Ansible modules, you can create and manage users, you can assign roles. Uh, more importantly, you can create style books using ADM Ansible modules, right? Uh, once you've created style books, you can use them to create a config pack and push your configs to ADCs. So those are some basic automation use cases that we support via ADM Ansible modules that you see here. And again, we have some sample playbooks for you to get started okay so now before you move on to demo let's take a look at this use case right so a couple of customers came to us that how do can they decentralize certain app centric netscaler configurations to their respective application owner teams and the requirements that we see is today there are your netscaler is front ending so many apps there are so many teams and they often have requests that they need to uh, update their services ports or introduce new services so admins usually get bogged down by so many requests right and this is usually a manual process or you there is a service now ticket or a jira now ticket for for the admins to uh, uh, cater to such kind of request now what the admins would like to do is provide a mechanism to decentralize such kind of app centric configurations to application owners but at the same time they want to have a centralized control on how these configurations are being pushed to your Netscaler. They want to enforce best practices. And at the same time, they want to give a restricted access to Netscaler so that application team can see only their LBV servers and then can, they can edit only those related configurations. At the same time, when it comes to application owners team, they want to make updates to Netscaler configuration as and when needed, right? They don't want to use ADM because they are not familiar with ADM. They want to use, let's say, tools like Terraform, Ansible, or Python scripts, which they are all already using in their DevOps or in their day-to-day uh, uh, -day work. And also, they want to release their apps, new apps releases, faster to end users. So, given these requirements by both Netscaler admins and application owner, owners' requirements, we have this solution where different ADC and ADM stack can come together to, to create an orchestrated system, right? Which, which can help you to automate and decentralize the app centric configurations. So let's go through this entire user flow before we see the demo. The first thing is, let's say an application developer make changes to their web apps, right? To their backend services. At the same time, he would create a request in, in a service now or a self-service portal where he can request a new LB or a ADC config update 
and and this request is the, goes to your adc team or our netscaler admin once this config update is validated by your adc then it service now has an integration with ansible which will trigger ansible task right so as part of this ansible task it will generate necessary ansible files or variable files and along with that it's going to trigger ansible playbook right once that ansible playbook is triggered that ansible playbook is going to trigger the adm style books adm style books is where your load balancing content switching policy configurations are given so adm still contains your netscaler configs in a declarative fashion but it's been triggered by the ansible playbook and all the style books then are run via the adm to the netscaler uh, this configs gets pushed to netscaler and then at the end end users are able to access the apps so over here you can see right uh, we have ansible we have adm style books and and we have a service now or github components where all this can work together to behave like an orchestrated well as, as an entire integrated system which can help you to manage your netscaler configurations and decentralize them in this way you can have faster time to releases and you can reduce the burden on the netscaler admins so as part of this demo now this workflow could be a way little bit different for your use case right it, it could change from time to time uh, it could depends upon your use case or how your ci cd is set up but this is a generic example uh, just to show you how this because of automation you can integrate your netscaler to wide range of it systems and and such that you can have a completely automated management of your installs as part of demo i'm going to just focus on the fifth and sixth part where we'll show you how can you trigger ansible playbooks how you can trigger adm style books via ansible and you will see once this adm style was triggered the configurations are pushed to netscaler yes okay before i move on to demo i want to just walk you through our ansible repo so here we have hosted our ansible modules and here in the ansible collections you can see we have adc collection as well as adm collection we will be using adm collection other thing is if you're new to is then do check out our documentation we have some beginners guide on how do you get started with adc ansible modules and adm ansible modules i will go to a sample playbook section where we have some playbooks ready for you so for this example we have citrix adm service playbooks we'll be using uh, two playbooks of in two playbooks which are of interest to us is the stylebook one and the config pack one the stylebook one let's understand the stylebook one here you see that we want to run this playbook on our adm service so here we log into our adm service all this ip id secret will be picked from your inventory file where we give all of these values then once it's which is locked in established session then it goes and creates a style book as you can see here this is entirely into playbooks are in yaml and we have defined the style book here itself you can keep it in a separate file and then link it over here and this is the inventory file right so here we are saying hey this is the adm service and these are the variables of adm service so this is my client id secret this is the adc ip where i want to push the configurations so all you put it in the inventory file and then coming to config pack so once you have the style book created you use this config pack playbook where again you log into adm service right you get the uh, uh the information on the netscaler instance that you want to target and using that authenticate session you can give the values that you want to push to your netscaler right that you want to create a web at this ip these are the servers you want to bound and this is the algorithm of your load balancing so all this config pack details you provided here and you tell that i want to use this type right uh, so once this config pack is pushed it's again log out from the adm so for our example i will be showing this to uh, 
uh, playbooks. So as you can see here, I have cloned my GitHub repo in my Linux controller. I have config pack, I have style book, I have inventory file. And here in the left panel, you can see the EDM service where I've logged in. Currently, there is no style book. And what we are going to do is we are going to just run this simple command of ansible hyphen playbook, pointing it to inventory file, and then we'll say, you know, uh, uh, we'll just point to the which style book, which playbook we want to run, which is the style book. So let's see, you can see the task are being executed. It logged into EDM service, then it's now uh, it's setting up the style book for us. Okay, so once the style book is done on the left side, you can see that the style book is up, right? Um, now what we'll do is currently there's no config pack associated with style book. So we now will run config pack. Well, we'll run a playbook that will apply the config pack. So again, we run this similar command. And we see we log into ADN service again. We get the session ID. We get the uh, Netscaler instance details where you want to publish this, push this configurations, and then we trigger a config pack. Okay, you can see that this has been successfully executed. On refreshing it, you will see hey, here is our Netscaler configurations. You can see it's been executed. On the right side, again, we can see that. Once we go to our Netscaler in instance, you can validate, okay, there is an LBB server which has been created with the name config pack, as we see here. And if we try to check service group, we'll see all those info that we have provided as part of the config pack, you will see that Netscaler instance has got them. Yeah, so you can validate this that all those configurations we are providing config pack has been pushed to Netscaler. So uh, now similarly, you can create a new version of the style book and you can also update your style book to the uh, update your config pack to the new style book when you want to edit those configurations to your Netscaler. Uh, just in the interest of time, I'm not able to show you, but you can refer our GitHub repo and everything. You can follow how all this can be done when you follow this business guide to using medium and simple modules. Right? So just summarizing, there's a lot of benefit of using automation. Once you start managing your Netscaler configurations as code, as I mentioned, you can just track them, version them, like how we would do codes of other uh, applications or other systems. Um, Again, now GitHub can become their centralized source of truth of what Netscaler configs look like, right? And once your configurations are part of the GitHub, uh, you can use them to integrate with other IT systems and, and you know, build much more automated, highly integrated systems. That are, all this will actually result in, basically you would save a lot of time, you will reduce manual errors, uh, it will help you, your application teams to push the updates, to push new releases faster, and you get freed up to take up much more higher value added tasks. So this is a kind of benefits of Netscaler. In, in, in short, um, uh, something called Netscaler Lab, which is very interesting. So you would remember that we had uh, launched our Netscaler community platform where you can come and explore various areas or various the solutions that comes with Netscaler, right from automation, Netscaler cloud security. Now as part of that, we also have something called Netscaler Labs, right? Um, so if you log in with Netscaler Labs, then you can try out this self-paced hands-on lab, which will guide you through right from how to install Terraform, how do you create Terraform scripts and push it to AC. This will take 15, 20 minutes of your time and you would have to do nothing. Just it's a browser based lab. You log in and you try out this entire lab and you will know what it's like to automate ADC with Terraform or what it's like to you know, automate your net scalers with Ansible. So I do urge you that you take out some 15 minutes of your time and try out this Terraform Ansible lab and you might, you will find definitely a lot of 
cool way of how you manage your net scalers and, and you would like to take up this for your net scaler deployments. Great. Uh, that brings to the end of my presentation. Thanks for your time. I will hand it over to Priyanka. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Avinash. Thank you, everyone. Um, so hello, everybody. Today we are going to talk about the application dashboard feature, which is in ADM and talk about the benefits that uh, it provides. Uh, but before that, let us understand from an admin administrator's perspective, like what are all the problems that an admin faces when he manually monitors the multiple application? Imagine assessing all the applications that you have individually um and assessing them manually you do not have any data points you do not have any visibility uh, and you do not have any consolidated view so it sounds like a very cumbersome task also there are some frequent application issues that affect your applications like overused applications uh, if the traffic ha tra incoming traffic has increased you can see the that your uh, application is exhausted and uh, uh, the it is behaving abnormally uh, also, your application can get weirdly very slow due to uh, increase in the response time, or you can see uh, some kind of anomalous application behavior like 5xx error. So these are very common application issues. Uh, identifying them manually is it's pretty hard task. Also, even if you have identified the issue, the time that is consumed in troubleshooting why the uh, application is slow or why uh, there's an a devi a deviation in your application's usage pattern. Uh, it's a it's a time-consuming task, and even if you find the RCA, it's unclear what remediation plan you need to uh, take forward to take that corrective actions. Uh, so in total, uh, you can see if you manually monitor your uh, your application of fleet, it's it's time-consuming, it's effort-taking. So we present you application dashboard where we give you an application centric approach to troubleshoot all your issue. We check the overall applications health and performance from a single pane, give you a consolidated view in all the data metrics that uh, would be useful for you to come to, a, to uh, assess the applications uh, overall health and uh, performance. We also measure the health by using a very simplified uh, parameter known as app score. We'll talk more about it in the next uh, page. We also show you critical information that is related to your application and associated with the virtual servers and services. We reduce the turnaround time, like we talked about how much time it takes to troubleshoot uh, some issue and come to a conclusion of corrective action. So we reduce that time by uh, giving you uh, the insights into what are the issues and what might have caused the issue. Uh, so this is how application dashboard helps you in totality let's talk about app score so app score is the way uh, adm gives a score to the application's health and performance and it is calculated as 100 minus the total penalty so this penalty is charged on the application uh, application performance indicators like uh, you can see app response time server response time anomaly so these are some of the performance indicators of your application we also have ADC performance indicators like ADC CPU usage. Uh, so your applications are created on these ADCs. So that is why we consider ADC performance indicator also, because if your ADC is negatively performing, your application can get imp impacted too. Uh, so this is how we calculate the app score for your application and give you a very simplified manner to assess the health now let us uh, go directly to the product and see how the application dashboard looks like so this is your application uh, dashboard now what we see here is the data for last one hour so if you want to change it you can uh, get that segregation also uh, apart from this we have uh, so adm identifies application as uh, sorry virtual servers as one single application they are referred as discrete application if you have an application use case where you're required to group multiple virtual servers in uh, one single application, you can do that by creating custom application and ADM will henceforth treat uh, uh, the grouping as one single application. So this is uh, about the application types. We also have a uh, smart filters for you. So say if you want to uh, search, so you would have multiple applications. So searching that we easier searching, uh, searching by, uh, providing a smart filter say if you want to have application uh, you want to view into the application that are in critical state and also are facing current issue as low session reuse so you can do that 
by using our smart filters we have various categories of uh, these kind of filters uh, beyond this if you want to have a view or if you want to use our custom uh, if you want to have a custom regular expression for searching you can use a free text that we provide say you want to have a look into the application uh, that has api gateway in its name so you can type it in here and uh, this will populate all the application that uh, that has this te text api gateway so this is how you can customize and uh, view into applications as per your need uh, this is a graphical representation we also have a tabular format where we show all the application details in a list okay so coming back to our main dashboard you can see a lot of colors here uh, i'll walk you through what it actually means so like we talked about we assess your application based on the app score so this colors are based on the app score so application that are green in color that means it is in a good state and the app score is good uh, the applications that are in amber color that is yellow uh, it is in review state and you would want to uh, take some corrective actions and see what are the issues that are affecting your application and get it into a better state uh, the red ones are the uh, like it will take maximum uh, of your attention because it is in critical state and you it, it needs your immediate attention so that uh, you uh, see into it and what are the issues and uh, take some remediation so that it uh, it can get into a better state of app score uh, we also talked about how application score accounts for performance indicators so here we give you visibility into changing the performance indicators also uh, so you can come here into settings we so uh, this will list all the application uh, score uh, sorry all the uh, all the performance indicators that are there you can come here enable and disable some of the uh, uh, performance indicators if say for example if you do not want tcp resemble queue limit hits to be accounted for your app score so uh, the app score will ignore all the issues that come under this category even if you want to uh, you can see there are some threshold that are by default uh, set for some of the parameters you can change that too for example adc memory usage you can set it to uh, 30 percent uh, so what it means is if your adc memory usage falls uh, uh, falls out of this uh, threshold range it will highlight as an issue and the penalty would be charged and it would be uh, uh, subtracted from the app score that is so your uh, app score will uh, it will cause your app score to get reduced so let us come back to the dashboard and understand what all other things you can see so if you want to have a gist of uh, the application detail you can come here and just hover on the any of the application you'll get the details like what is the state of the application what is the health app, app health score what is the resp average response time that application is taking so in a gist you can get an overview of how that application is performing if you want to have more detailed view like an administrator comes here sees uh, my pet store uh, application is in uh, review state i would want to have more further details you can drill down by clicking on it so this uh, view uh, that will reflect now it will give you a more detailed uh, view we also have a duration tab here so this gives you more uh, recent data you can change it to one month to get more details and more trend that has been there for one month so this graph will give you the app scores trend that has been for a uh, past last one month uh, mapped with a timestamp and what was the score uh, beside this you can see there's a table here which tells which uh, will give you the details into what are the current issues that are affecting your app score so here we can see there is category there is penalty score that is charged against these uh, category which is affecting your application score and the number of issues that has been recorded under each category now uh, i as an admin i understand see these are the issues so there are three issues that are uh, there in ssl uh, ssl config performance and instance health respectively i want to have more information like what is the issue so i can scroll down and so we uh, give you a detailed uh, view into each of these issues let us discuss this one by one to understand how this data is read uh, so we have a current tab where you can see the current issues that are affecting we also have an all tab where you can see the all the historic data that would have uh, or is affecting your application so first is search queue build up this is a very interesting issue that we highlight 
so your virtual servers sometimes get a uh, increased amount of incoming request so in that case the uh, it surges the queue that queue of uh, request uh, so in that case the client might receive uh, some genuine client might receive the error pages and this is not a good experience for your client you would not want that and you would require to have a back end servers configured to handle such surges or in, uh, increased request so we highlight uh, how many occurrences have been happened for uh, uh, such kind of search queue builder uh, we tell you what is the issue we tell you a total number of occurrences when it was last occurred and give you more uh, details in a tabular format where we map when it happened how many occurrences happened on that day and a little text about uh, giving you more details into the issue uh, so mind you we not only give you detail on what happened and when it happened we also tell you what is to be done so our recommended action here tells uh, maybe you can increase the uh, maximum client configured for that application in case of search queue builder or you can increase the number of backend uh, servers to handle uh, the uh, incoming request so this is one of uh, the uh, issues there are multiple issues like adc memory usage that we have recorded for this application where it highlights uh, the uh, highlights the instances where the adc memory usage has surpassed your uh, configured threshold we also show your graphical representation this eases the view by showing you when was the maximum occurrence that was recorded similarly we have other uh, issue also a low session reuse not recommended this is these are some of the issues uh, we have multiple issues that we flag when your application is not doing well so coming back uh, on this so this is all about the performance tab we also have some other things that you can explore uh, that is service graph transaction log audit logs configure services so this is uh, the our performance tab uh, relate uh, uh, in the application uh, dashboard we also have other modules which contributes to further having more insights into the issues and application health that is key metrics web insight ssl security today we are not going to cover this uh, we'll be covering this in upcoming uh, webinars uh, so that was it from the demo perspective let us now go back and map our problems that we discussed to the uh, uh, to the solutions that we are providing through adm so we talked about how it is difficult to manually monitor such multiple and huge amount of applications so we are uh, automating it by giving you maximum vis visibility into all your application with the app score logic which is very simple to understand and simple so at a glance you can understand which all applications are performing well and which are not the issues that we discuss so we provide you useful insights in such kind of issues and many more we proactively highlight these issues so that you can uh, take further decisions and the time that you were the operational hours that you were spending in troubleshooting such applications and thinking of the remediation we are also reducing that by uh, giving you what are the current issues tagged along with what needs to be done uh, so that was it uh, this is how we help you in saving your operational hours you can please explore a uh, application dashboard and let us know what are your feedbacks we we'll love to have it and even if they are good even if they are bad so that was it um, avinash i'll hand it back to you thank you everyone okay uh thank you everyone uh, i think we are at the top of the hour so i will stop the poll thanks everyone for voting and and see you next month wherein again we'll be coming up with the new sessions and the new improvements which will be coming till the time uh, we connect next month have a good evening and a good month thank you bye bye